Hey guys, what is up? It is me, Pager here once again with another video on The Flash Season 7. And uh, yeah, this is my review for Episode 2, otherwise entitled The Speed of Thought. And I'm still recovering from that ending, but we have to wait. We have to talk, we have to get through the rest of the episode before we can, before we can talk about that. I'm mumbling, I'm jumbling. What the hell was that? Anyway, spoiler alert, <laughs> if you've not watched the episode, because we're going to jump into everything... But of course, if you're going to, you know, if you're continuing on, let me know in the comment section down below your various opinions about this episode. A lot of like, eh? moments like you're just sort of, what the hell's going on here? And then the end just slaps you. It literally slaps your head off. Uh, reactions. Let me know in the comments. I'm always curious and of course, and theories as to what's going on there as well. And of course, if you're going to enjoy the video, you enjoyed the episode, that end made you go, what the hell? Leave a like on the video, show support because, uh... Wow, that's all I can say. So last episode was a fairly big episode of the premiere. We had Nash sacrificing himself in order to bring about the new artificial speed force for Barry. Iris is becoming more connected to the Mirrorverse, which plays in this episode as well. And we uh, find out that Eva has been this clone from the Mirrorverse the entire time. The real Eva died, and this has been the duplicate or the fake. But we start off the episode with a bit of a, an emotional torture scene with uh, Barry remembering all the versions of Wells that he's experienced in the past which is perfect for this episode when you think about the ending and just the reality that there are none left now. <laughs> I say that, but once again, the ending. But yeah, so this once again, this doesn't even make sense when I say it, but there's no more Wells to, Wellses to depend on. So eh, scratch that out because of the ending. But we did see this like Star Labs Hall of Remembrance. I don't think we've seen it before with like other dedications like Ronnie, Nora West Allen, Jesse Quick, many others. I think even like, Oliver's mask was there as well. Um, there was a good amount there. I don't know if we'll, we'll visit there again. I'm not too sure. Now, Barry's talk to Joe about villains using his heart and emotions to get to him set this episode up and you knew when that was happening that, you know, that would play along with the episode and maybe what's going on, um, in the next few episodes as well. Uh, but it definitely related to this episode. A lot and it was a nice Joe and Barry conversation. They're always good. Now, of course, last episode towards the end, we saw Iris sending that message to Camilla and Singh, but the screen rippled, which made us think, okay, is that, you know, transporting the message to the other side. And that's what we see. We actually see Allegra get that message that Iris sent last episode. Obviously, Allegra can't go to that meeting place because, spoiler alert, she's not in the Mirrorverse. But yeah, it was not intended for her, and uh, but it gives them a good idea as to what's going on there. Now, this episode was pretty much how to get into the Mirrorverse. Now, Iris eventually gets out, which, you know, you've already watched the episode. It's not a spoiler. But the whole process has Barry tapping into this new ability that he has thanks to the artificial speed force, and it allows him to see ahead pretty much and simulate certain events and calculate certain ways, you know, just I don't, you just like a lot of simulation pretty much. And I must say, Cisco was uh, ahead of times here in this episode by a good amount because uh, he was correct on the part where he say he freaky about Barry. Barry was indeed freaky this episode. Yeah, but that whole speed thinking that Barry has is quite overpowered. Um, but you know, for what happens this episode, I, you know, we're not going to see it going forward, but yeah, they need to know exactly where Iris is and they also need to make up for Bloodworks blood. I know it's been a long time since season six and what happened, but it's important to remember they use Bloodworks blood on the mirror and stuff. So they have to sort of replicate that. I did find it fu like funny, the whole like Barry's endless board scene to explain the entire plan to get Iris and the others out of the mirror verse. Uh, this power won't be around for too long, as I said, um, because, it, you know, I think watching the episode, you knew it wasn't going to be there. It's like, it's just too overpowered. Um, I, I thought they might have stretched it to next episode, but considering what happened this episode, I thought it was probably just smart to get rid of it now, but it was still a cool experience this episode to have it. But yeah, they pretty much need particles to pretty much replicate Bloodworks blood. Now, couldn't they just go to Bloodwork? Did, like, I thought they would have been able to get, the, I guess maybe getting to Argus would be hard, but, so this is maybe the easier route, but yeah. Now, one thing I was like, oh, okay, was um, when we had Mirror Masting, Mirror Masting, Mirror Masting, Mirror Master versus the Flash and Frost. She comes into an entry scene in this episode, which was cool. Barry's able to get the particles using like that tachyon sort of device, but reconfigured to allow, to, allow it to capture the particles. But Barry allows Frost to get hit by Eve. And I was like, what the hell's going on here? And it's like his speed thinking is changing that emotional driven Barry into a more tactically driven Barry, if that makes sense. Like he knew he was going to, going to be able to cure Frost and that was a certainty, but there was a slight, slight chance attacking on device where the particles could be damaged. So it was, uh, you know, tactically at least, it was smarter to have Frost get injured, cure her later, than have the attacking on device get damaged with the particles at that point. So you can see where Barry's coming from, but it's the complete opposite of what normal Barry would have done. 
But of course, this whole speed thinking Barry just allows Barry to figure out that Eva is not Eva. She's the mirror clone due to like things she said and you know his experiences with the mirror version of Iris. Now Barry uses his like newly acquired hacking skills to pretty much expose or drop a diss track on Mirror Eva to the world on live TV. Now was this a good or bad move? Your you know your choice. So we'll see it next episode because this the end of this episode sort of sets it up. But regardless of whether it ends up being a good or bad move, it's a risky, 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 risky move. That's the correct answer with it all. When I think Barry even saying that like his friends and family are now targets, but saying in like a positive way almost, really weird. But one of the like things that I think might have caught a lot of people off guard was when Barry's calculations show that not all the people stuck in the Mirrorverse can be saved. So it's pretty much a choice of Camilla and Singh can be saved together. And Iris is left there or Iris can only be saved by herself and Camilla and Singh are left behind. And he simulates the voting process and I thought it was real. I think all of you did watching as well. I thought it just, you know, that played on after that, you know, that initial, um, you know, calculation. But the whole thing was a simulation. But as Cisco does say, this Barry has zero, zero emotion. So how could he predict others' emotions if he himself can't experience them either and then put it to like some sort of simulation? But... Man, when he said Sing and Camilla were expendable, that was like a, whoa, seriously, too far, man. Like, he said it straight to Cisco's face. It's like, you definitely have zero emotion and also, like, zero care in the world. It's weird. But one scene that I was like, oh, they did it. And no one was really asking for it. But now we watched him, like, that was incredibly cool. And that's when it was Team Flash versing the Flash, which then led into Killer or Frost, might I say. Not Killer Frost, I guess she's just Frost now taking Velocity X and becoming speeds to frost for a short amount of time. That was so unexpected, but so cool at the same time. Um, and it was just cool. like And like combining the speeds to powers with her frost powers as well. Just, who thought of that? That's just really smart. It's almost like they had like a thing on a whiteboard, like all these different scenarios. And one of them was frost gets speed. And they just chucked, peeled, you know, peeled it off the whiteboard and put it into this episode. I know a lot of sitcoms use that, but maybe the Flash TV show is using that as well. But in the end, the speed thinking was too powerful with that damn quantum ball and Barry just being able to read everything, you know, how it was all going to end and stuff like that. Now, Barry eventually gets access to the Mirrorverse through that little gateway thing that they've made and he's trying to retrieve Iris, but she's just refusing and resisting, which Barry wasn't expecting, but eventually she gets dragged out, but she does collapse like we see Singh and Camilla, um, you know, do earlier in the Mirrorverse. So... Everyone is down around Barry. No one can help him out. And he does destroy the fusion sphere, but we really leave off from there. So we're left on a cliffhanger on three different things. That, it fades to black. Then we pick up with Eva aiming to make the real world the mirror world. So she's going to be going through that whole transformation process next episode. Then we leave from that. Actually, there's four technically. There's four. I'm an idiot. I can't count. There's four. Then we leave to Central City Police Department. We see one of the officers there get abducted by a, someone in the mirror world, just like the silver hands come out. I'm assuming Eva jumps in there maybe and then does that or she just looks through a mirror and goes to CCPD. Hard to tell. The scene went pretty quickly, but I don't know if she jumped back into the mirror world or not there. As I said, it was hard to tell exactly what was going on. But it will be interesting to see where that plays off next episode and seeing how many people Eva takes over. That's like, is she just going to start abducting people and taking them? I don't know. I we'll have to wait and see. Or is she going to take one person over from like a specific environment in Central City that's important? Who knows? But the big one that's going to have people theorizing, going, what the hell? Wasn't expecting that in the slightest is the reverse flash. So we see this like once upon a time pop up. And you could hear the whole like Wells and Thorn voices going on and stuff like that. I was like, okay, what's going on here? And we have a throwback to when Reverse Flash initially took over the original Harrison Wells. Important to remember, this is a Harrison Wells that Barry has not met. He's never interacted with this Harrison Wells, even though he lived on this Harrison Wells' Earth for the you know, his entire life and until this event took you know took place. Um, so we have, um, well, so how how old Barry been? Like six or seven, I think, when this would have happened, something along those lines. But we have a throwback to this moment. And we see the grave, everything like that, you know, reverse flash running, you know, digging the grave, putting the body in there, you know, burying the grave and everything. But then we see those green particles come up, the ones that like from the mirrorverse or something. I'm not too sure exactly how they're going to explain that. Am I missing a bit there? But where like the green particles, which are sort of, um, well, they're, they're replicating sort of like the, the bio thing, like that was sort of meant to replicate um, Bloodworks blood. So I guess they're just sort of like bio particles. I don't know how you'd refer to them as, but... 
Regardless, original Harrison Wells is born again. This is the original Harrison Wells that we had flashbacks with in season one. What the hell's going on? He's like sentient. It's just him. He's just reborn, but in present day. <laughs> what is going on? Where does this go? Like, I am so, so, so curious to see where this goes. And I don't even know if they're going to pick up with the next episode. They might leave that. And I do think that this is the reverse flash cliffhanger. I'm assuming that this is the reverse flash cliffhanger that they were talking about all the way back in season six, that was meant to maybe end season six proper, like right at the end of episode, the last episode of season six, but they put it in this episode, maybe because they might insert something at the end of next episode, which explains it more. But man, I was not expecting that and I can't wait to see where it goes. I've not seen the promo for next week, so I don't know if it refers to it at all. If it does, I'll cover in my trailer breakdown, but I cannot wait to see where they go with this. I'm assuming we might not deal with the next episode and we do it once we get to like episode four and beyond like the proper season seven story, but oh, it's got me excited. But overall, I thought this episode was really solid. I really enjoyed it. There was no bits that maybe, you know, that were a bit boring. Uh, it was very interesting to see Grant Gustin play this different type of character. Like last episode, he's playing all those Wellses and this time he's playing this very different Barry with zero emotion. It was I think it was pretty good by him. And yeah, I'm just intrigued to see how they wrap up the Mirror Master story next episode because next week is the Mirror Master finale. So let's see how they wrap it up. But yeah, guys, thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, it'd be awesome. You could drop a like on it to show your support. Let me know in the comments section down below your various opinions on this, like theories, thoughts, reactions. Let me know all of them down there. And of course, if you are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe and I'll catch you guys later. Goodbye.